This is the Super Console X Pro emulation gaming system. I ordered this from China through AliExpress. Took two months for it to arrive, but it arrived today. This is not going to be a deep dive. This is just a first look with the ordering process to get the thing, unboxing it, and running it for the first time. That's coming up on Thrifty AV. I've really been wanting another HDMI source for my HDMI capture videos and this uh, Super Console X Pro outputs 1080p 60 HDMI so I think that'll be a good test for some of these capture devices. Let's look at the order form when I ordered this from AliExpress. Okay, I ordered the Super Console X Classic Emulator. I got the version that's $55.11. This emulator cost anywhere between $48.42 and $72.12 and $72 depending on the setup you choose. The cheapest setup would have two game controllers that are Super NES style. I went with the setup that has two Bluetooth PlayStation style controllers here and the 64 gigabyte card. The 64 gigabyte card one comes with 33,000 games. I could have gone for the 41,000 games and that comes with the 128 gigabyte card or I could have gone with the 50,000 games with the 256 gigabyte card but the price goes up more than it should considering the card that comes with it. This thing has, uh, well, it says built-in 50,000 games here. I didn't go with that version. It is multilingual. It has 50 plus emulators for different game systems. Uh, supports Wi-Fi LAN connection. And it says support 4K HD output. But that's not the resolution. It says 720 1080p resolution. And you can uh, save your games in progress. It says it has a high performance chip here. The S905M comes with a couple of uh, wireless controllers. Has an Ethernet port, HDMI, DCN, and a power switch. The memory card goes on the other side and there's the two USB ports for your controllers. And I went with the two uh, PlayStation style controllers. Uh, says it does come with an HDMI cable. That's nice. A lot of five star reviews here on AliExpress so most people who've ordered this have actually liked it. So this little emulation console should be pretty fun to play with and also to test out HDMI stuff, you know, HDMI capture devices, stuff like that. I need a game system that's a little better than the uh, Atari flashbacks I've been using. This is actually an empty box. I've taken it out. I've played it already. Let's back up and check out that unboxing. Okay, here is a package that came all the way from China. It took a long time to get here talking two months. Here we have the Super Console X Pro smoothly runs 80 plus emulators for all of these game systems. Uh, PS1, PSP, Nintendo 64, a lot of game system emulation going on here. Has an SD card slot, two USBs, AV, Ethernet, HDMI, DCN, and power. This box is a little bit jacked up. Let's go ahead and open this box up. All right, game system is in here. There's the Super Console X. Looks like an HDMI cable. That's a, a USB hub. All right, barrel connection, standard uh, US plug. Okay, this is this came with two smart game pads, uh, TGZ706W. All right, yes, these controllers feel a little bit chintzy, but frankly, this whole system 
with the game system and the cabling and the controllers cost less than, you know, a set of high dollar controllers would. So, I'm not going to complain about the controllers feeling cheap. I can upgrade the controllers if I need to. There is some plastic to peel here. Look at that. There's an inspection sticker covering the micro SD card slot, and if you peel the sticker, you avoid the warranty. Let's plug it in. Splash screen says MU Elec. A resolution change messed with my capture device, but I caught the tail end of that video animation when the thing boots up. Check out all these configuration files loading up. For my first run through, I left the menu settings at default. I never owned an Atari 7800, so looking through all these games that were available for it was kind of fun. It's stuff that I just totally missed out on. Now, a friend of mine did have the Atari 5200, and I played some of these games with him, specifically Star Raiders. When the game launched, it brought up that the game controllers were working. I picked a novice mission and I never quite got the hang of it. The game controllers for the Atari 5200 had a numbered keypad and I think those numbers did stuff on this game. So I was unable to access those features. Maybe if I used a keyboard I could access those features. I'm not too crazy about the bezel on the left and right side that shows the Atari 5200 uh, stuff on it. Next I wanted to try the Legend of Zelda and the first thing I noticed was the, the menus were all in the wrong language and I could not switch it to English. Okay, at this point, I decided to go into the menu and turn off the bezels, turn off the splash screen, and turn off the boot video. I also found a menu with specific settings for each emulation. This should be handy for future gameplay, and I'll keep it in mind. Considering the questionable licensing on some of these games, I have not hooked this up to a network yet. I might try that out later. To give you an idea of how many systems this emulates, I've done a fast motion of the main menu for the games uh, by system. Uh, now I'm scrolling through the submenu called All Games, and you can see how extensive this is. Uh, just getting through the games that start with A. Sometimes the same game is released on multiple systems. As you can see, Beavis and Butthead here is Game Boy, Genesis, SNES. So I'm just going to pick one of these that I think will work. <laughs> pull my finger. <laughs> no way. <laughs> Come on, Beavis. Pull it. Okay. <laughs> that was cool. I had trouble getting Butthead past the snake in the pet store. I couldn't seem to both uh, swing my club and jump at the same time. And that's what I seem to need to do in order to hit that snake. As far as uh, latency goes on gameplay, it's really not that bad. I have worse latency with the Flashback 9 unit and the Flashback Blast units. Uh, this one has a little 4-core CPU in there that's doing a pretty good job. With the Super Console X, you have choices as far as game pads go. You can go with the more traditional flat game pads, and they're wired. Uh, well, these are wireless. They use Bluetooth. There's a little uh, Bluetooth dongle in each of these. And uh, they look more like what you would get with a PlayStation or an Xbox. They are lighter weight, uh, but all the buttons do work. All the buttons feel fairly responsive. I doubt they would stand up to hours and days of gameplay. 
Uh, so if you are a heavy gamer, you might want to swap these out with something a little better down the road anyway. I'm pretty happy with the Super Console X Pro. It's going to be an excellent device for me to test HDMI output uh, for HDMI capture devices. Yes, those 50,000 games have questionable licensing. The controllers are pretty cheap. But overall, this thing did not cost me that much money and it's going to do what I want it to do. If you enjoyed this video, smash that like button. Thank you to my patrons for supporting this channel and remember, stay thrifty everyone.